guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Summer. Today I'm going to be talking about protein. Now I am going to be breaking this into two different parts. I'll be talking more about protein here in the next few days and I'll dive a little bit deeper. But today we're just gonna start with the basics. I'm going to tell you what protein is, some cons of if you eat too much protein, and how much protein you should actually be eating. Now I am not a personal, <laughs> I am a personal trainer. <laughs> but I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a doctor. Always consult with one of those people before you change your diet. But I did have to take um, a nutrition class when I got my Associates of Science um, degree. And I also had to study about nutrition, like the basics of nutrition in order for me to become certified as a personal trainer. Let me point you guys down a little bit. Okay, I think that's better. <laughs> okay. But I have notes down here, so if you see me look down, that's why. But let's just go ahead and dive right into this video. Now, overall, in the bodybuilding and health and fitness world, it is recommended for you to eat X amount of protein. And I'll talk about this a little bit later in the video. But just to debunk that right off the bat, you're probably eating way more protein than you actually need to be eating. And this has come from my own personal experience as well as really listening to the knowledge that I have learned over the past few years and not just thinking that I'm right and scientists are wrong. Don't be ignorant like that. Don't not be open to change. Really be open to understanding why it is that they recommend to eat that much protein. And you'll probably prove yourself wrong and start doing things the right way, which is going to be better off for your body in the long run because being healthy internally is your number one priority. Or at least it is for me. If you're watching this channel, you already know that. <laughs> so with that being said, I want to touch on what protein actually is. Protein is not just what the bodybuilding world makes it out to be. Protein is a large complex molecule that allows your body to function properly. So really, any function that takes place inside your body, more than likely, protein has something to do with it. It nearly regulates every biomechanical function inside your body, which is awesome. There's so many characteristics about protein that aren't even talked about. Things that have to do with your blood, your metabolism, your immune system, the way that nutrients transport within your system as well has to do with protein. I mean, the list really goes on, but it's not just about muscle mass, which yes, protein does have to do with building muscle, but like I just mentioned, there are so many more things than just that. A protein is made up of little, small, tiny particles called amino acids. Now I'll be talking about amino acids more in my next video. I'll be discussing complete protein sources, incomplete protein sources, along with plant-based and animal-based protein because that's a really big topic that I want to share with you guys. Um, but I'll definitely be diving a little bit more into all of those things in the next video, but you do have to learn the basics before you can understand what I'll be discussing then. Now, with that all being said, how much protein should you actually be consuming? Now, there's so many different numbers out there and you can obviously do your own research on your own, um, but I've gained my knowledge through experience, trial and error, as well as through taking the courses that I've taken, reading, doing research on my own. And these are the ranges that I have um, found and have seen religiously on these websites and within books. Now, one of the books that I took these ranges from is a book that I have with me. This is the book that I used when I took my nutrition course in college. I pulled the ranges from this book, but they were very similar, if not the same, to the ranges that I found when I was doing my research online. And they're the ranges that I use for my own personal diet as well as for other clients that I've had in the past. Now, with that being said, if you don't work out and you're just an average Joe person who goes about their life, you should be consuming 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. 
Now bear with me a second before you have no idea what I just said. Now, if you are a non-vegan athlete, so you work out, you eat animal-based products, you're breaking down your muscle tissue and you're an active person, this is the range for you. 1.2 to 1.7 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Now, if you are vegan, you should eat 1.3 to 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So what this means is you have your body weight. In order to convert it to kilograms, you divide it by 2.2. Now, you then pick which category you fall into. Are you not active? Are you active and you eat animal-based products? Or are you active and you're vegan? Depending on that, you will pick a number within that range depending on what best suits what you think your lifestyle is. So if you're active and you eat meat, you'll pick the lower end of that spectrum, which is 1.2 and multiply it by your body weight in kilograms. However, if you eat meat and you're super active, you lift weights all the time, like six times a week, you're depleting your muscle tissue all the time, you're obviously gonna pick the higher end of that spectrum, which is 1.7 grams of protein per kilograms of body weight. And obviously you can do the same if you are a vegan athlete too, and pick in that range as well and multiply it by your body weight. But for example, I weigh 155 pounds on a good day when it's not Thanksgiving and Christmas season. <laughs> and I, in order to convert 155 to kilograms, I divide it by 2.2. So when I divide it by 2.2, I get 70.45 kilograms. So that is my weight converted to kilograms. Now I would multiply that by whatever number in that spectrum. If I multiplied it by 1.2, I would be needing to eat 85 grams of protein. Now, if I was super active and went on the high end of that and multiplied it by 1.7, I would be eating 120 grams of protein. So you can see that it's a wide range, but it takes a little bit of trial and error to see what works best for you, for your lifestyle, and for what results you can see by being consistent and patient with whatever choice you pick for your macros on protein. Now, I do want to know that if you are in the fitness industry and know bodybuilding and all that stuff, you're probably thinking this girl is completely incompetent and has no idea what she's talking about because if she knew what she was talking about, she would know that bodybuilders eat way more protein than that. Well, I will tell you right now <laughs> that I am not being biased. I came from that ignorant mindset and I used to eat upwards of 200 grams of protein per day because I had a coach who told me that in order for me to lose fat, I needed to eat a lot of protein. So I eat, ate like two grams of protein per pound of body weight, not kilograms. And not just one, two grams of protein per pound of body weight. Now, generally speaking, you know, on the average range, they're going to basically tell you to eat about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if that was me, I would be eating 155 pounds, 155 grams of protein per day. Now that is very different than eating 85 to 120 grams of protein, right? There's a very big discrepancy. And honestly, that's on the lower end. I'm being gracious by saying 155 grams if I was like a bodybuilder macro coach. Now, I don't wanna offend anybody if you are a macro coach um, or just a coach in general, nutritionist, whatever. But from my experience and from the people that I'm around and from the people that I watch on YouTube and see and listen to, that's generally what they're saying. And I used to do that. I used to do that and I would see results. I would gain muscle, all of that good stuff. But then I realized that this book that I read years prior to eating 200 grams of protein a day 
um, or 150 grams of protein per day tells me exactly how much protein I need to be eating per day and I was just ignorant to listen to it. I thought that they had no idea what they were talking about. They weren't a CrossFit athlete. They, they just were wrong. Scientists were wrong and I was right. <laughs> but that's not the case at all. If you ask yourself the question, why? Why is it that you know nutritionists, dietitians, and um, people in that field say you should be eating this range of protein? It's because having diversity in your diet is super important. It's not just about one macronutrient over another. It's making sure you're getting a wide variety from each macronutrient eating whole, healthy, nutritious foods, feeding your body vitamins, minerals, and all the good healthy things to make sure your body is running properly internally. It's not just about how you look on the outside. Now, yes, I did do this and I ate high, high protein based off of the bodybuilding, bodybuilding style ways and I ate lower fat, moderate carbs, and I saw a change. But you should again ask yourself the question why and realize that the reason why I saw results is because I was consistent and patient over a long period of time with what I was doing with my diet as well as working really hard in the gym. So if you haven't seen before, but a couple months ago I did like a summer challenge to lose a little bit of weight and I did this based off of eating the actual proper amount of protein with converting my body weight to kilograms. I didn't do it the bodybuilding style way. And I was consistent over a relatively long period of time. I would say short to long period of time, but I was patient and consistent with my diet. And I also was working hard in the gym and I saw results. You see vegan athletes, you see vegan bodybuilders out there and they're doing the same thing. They're eating higher protein based off of what the ranges I just gave you were, but really in the bodybuilding world, they're eating low protein because they're not eating excessive amounts of protein. So the reason why it's important to make sure you pick the correct ranges of how much protein you're eating and you don't excessively eat a lot of protein in your diet is because it can do your body a lot of damage, just like it can do your body damage if you don't eat enough protein. But for the sake of this video, if you overeat in protein, you are doing your body a lot of harm. You can potentially cause issues with your kidneys, it can affect your blood pressure, and based off of the research and stuff that I've read, it can potentially cause chronic diseases in the future. Now, if you really think about it, that's because if you're eating high, high protein, the majority of your calories are coming from protein. Hence, you're going to have lower fat, you know, moderate carbs. So if you wanna make sure you hit your macros at the end of the day, you have to be very particular with what, you have to be very particular with how you're getting your protein sources and how you're consuming it. Because you're so low fat, you have to eat very lean protein sources. So you're going to be eating things like fish, salmon, you know, animal-based products, um, not plant-based products because most plant-based protein sources are going to have fats and carbohydrates. But, but we don't want to get our fats and carbohydrates from protein sources on the plant-based side because we have to eat such high amounts of protein that it would be impossible for me to hit my low fat and low carbohydrate macro. Generally speaking, if you have a very high protein diet, lower of the other macronutrients, you have to eat animal-based protein sources. High animal-based products is going to be high in saturated fats. Now, saturated fats are not necessarily bad for you, but overeating them are really bad for you. There are good and bad saturated fats, so you're obviously going to be overeating in the bad saturated fats too. So that's going to potentially cause issues down the road and that might be where the chronic diseases and illnesses come in into the future too. But not only that, but when you have such a high protein diet, you're lacking in other nutrients. You're lacking in 
you know, nutrients, vitamins, and minerals from your fats and carbohydrates because all of your calories are coming from protein. Just remember that when it comes to what you're eating, you should be making sure you're doing your body good. You're giving it a healthy environment to thrive off of. Eating high protein is not giving your body a good environment to thrive off of because your diet is so limited in variety that it's lacking in more than likely a lot of nutrients. When you're lacking in nutrients, your body's not going to perform properly and you're doing it a lot of damage. And if you're not doing a lot of damage now or you don't find out that you are, you're going to find out down the road. So it's so important that you make sure you don't overconsume in protein. You don't need to eat more than you think. You don't need to eat the amount that the majority of people out there say you need to eat because it's it's not accurate. You can see results no matter what. As long as you're consistent, persistent, and patient with whatever you decide to do, you're gonna see changes. It's not the diet that gives you changes. It's how patient, how consistent you are, doing trial and error, seeing what works best for your body, and that's going to result in seeing physical changes or you know, maybe even internal changes. So just remember that, keep in mind what protein is, a lot of functions, keep in mind what amount you should actually be eating and why it's important to not overeat in protein too, because there's a lot of illnesses that come from that as well. So I hope you took something from this video. In the next video, I'll touch on all those things that I mentioned prior, but I will be linking all of my sources down below. I'll link this book as well. And again, just make sure you consult with a doctor or something before you do change your diet. And if you have questions, comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in my next video.